Excellent. What's up guys and welcome to my monthly builds video for July 2016. I get asked all the time for me to look at people's parts lists or to give them builds so that they can build a system. So this is my response to that. Each month I do two parts lists for computer builds. These are all based on your votes and your feedback from months past. So I actually didn't do this for June because I was at Computex. Last one was back in May. And the results from that straw poll have come in, although I had to make that straw poll a little bit more vague. So uh, here are the results. I was just asking what are people more excited about because again, I, there was parts that were not out yet at that time. Anyway, everyone was really excited for NVIDIA's new GPUs back at that point in time. I also asked about AMD's new Radeon GPUs, which happens to be the RX 480, which we know now. I think there was less excitement about it at that point in time, but I think now it's gotten a little bit more exciting. So for today's video, I'm gonna be doing two builds based on the AMD RX 480, which is a $600 build, as well as a $1,200 build based on the NVIDIA GTX 1070, uh, specifically the MSI version of that. Also a couple changes for this month. One is that I'm not live streaming this in case you didn't notice. They were always just very short when I live streamed them and so I decided I'm just going to do it and then upload it to YouTube. And also, whereas in the past I have done the builds and then occasionally actually built one, now I'm going to commit to do the builds and then most of the time actually build them. So I will be building one of these builds, specifically the uh, $1,200 build later this month. So stay tuned for that. And finally, before we get into the builds, you guys should definitely check out and vote on the straw poll for next month. What PC builds do you want to see in August? It's linked down in the video description. I got a cheap VR uh, ready system, budget gaming rig, $1,200 all-rounder, uh, or a GTX 1080 SLI build. Any of those you can vote on, and those will be used to determine what we talk about next month. But let's get into the builds for this month, starting with the less expensive $600 RX 4E build, and there it is right there. Uh, I based it around a Core i3-6100 CPU. It's a dual-core processor with hyper-threading. It's Skylake. Um, it will be upgradable, although it is one of the weaker parts of this system, but it only costs about $110 to $120 US right now. Got an Asus motherboard, crucial memory, uh, of course that AMD graphics card, uh, as well as an AMD uh, SSD you know, just for, for matchy-matchiness. Fractal Design Core 2300 case and an EVGA 500 watt power supply. So uh, let's go over these parts one at a time and we'll kind of talk about what's what. Also, by the way, check out my builds list, my, my builds playlist on YouTube if you want to see me do builds. And anytime I do these builds, I will add them to that list. Um, all right, so starting off with the processor, it's a Core i3-6100. Uh, 3 megabyte cache, 3.7 gigahertz, so it actually runs at a pretty decent frequency, and it does have hyper-threading, so even though it's got two physical cores, it's got four logical cores, so um, that can trick some games that require uh, quad-core into working with this uh, processor. And it comes with a uh, CPU heatsink fan, which is also important. Uh, for motherboard, I just stuck with an Asus budget range motherboard. Again, this is a little over $100, uh, depending where you buy it at. Z170E, LJ1151. This should be drop-in compatible with KB Lake once it comes out. So if you do decide to upgrade that weaker link in the system, being the uh, processor, you can drop that into this motherboard, or you should be able to with a BIOS update based on what we are told. Other than that, it's got a nice feature set all around, good uh, feedback from, from the reviews and whatnot, and hey, even a $20 mail-in rebate card at Newegg if you buy it there right now. Cool. For memory, we went to a 2 by uh, 4 gig kit, 8 gigs total, Crucial Ballistic Sport. It's it's kind of sporty, you know, it's silver, it's got some digi camo in there, which I'm not a huge fan of, but hey, that'll blend in. Black and silver, though, it'll blend in with the motherboard and look pretty nice in an 8 gig kit. Kit is what you want. Uh, for an SSD, I like to do an only an SSD in most of my builds simply because I feel like most people have old hard drives lying around that they can easily drop in to add some more mass storage. And a 240 gig SSD will get you by without too much difficulty. About 60 bucks is kind of the going price for a decent 240 or 256 gig SSD. This is a solid pick from uh, AMD Radeon. I actually don't know who OEMs this SSD I used to, but I forget now. Um, and let's move on then to the... Uh, actual graphics card next, which is, of course, the Radeon RX 480. Now, if you looked at my actual parts list, you might have spotted uh, the RX 480, which is listed right here, and I actually wrote in the price for this at $200. So I went with a 4-gig card. This is the only 4-gig card that's currently listed on PC Part Picker. Uh, the 4-gig cards are $200, and this is an XFX version right here at Newegg. A lot of these are sold out right now, but there's supposed to be more stock coming in soon. If you happen to get a 4-gig RX 480, there is a chance if you get one of these early versions, that you might actually get a four, an 8 gig card, even though it's actually running on a VBIOS that runs only 4 gigs of that memory. So what you can do 
it's check, and even some of the boxes, this is a Tweak Town article, by the way, even some of the boxes said eight gig on them and they put a four gig sticker over it. So if you happen to get one of these lucky early versions, then you can basically flash your VBIOS with an eight gig version and you get an eight gig card for the four gig price. That's not guaranteed by any stretch. I imagine uh, AMD will be launching actual four gig cards as well, but um, hey, it's 40 bucks cheaper and you get the chance at getting free uh, VRAM right now. And for this build, honestly, you're probably going to be playing at 1080 anyway, and 4 gigs is probably sufficient. So for the 40 bucks and to keep the price down, went with the 4 gig card. But hey, if you really want the 8 gigs, pay 40 bucks more. Uh, for a case, I went with a simple Fractal Core Design, Fractal Design Core 2300. It's a full-size ATX case, and that's 40 bucks. Um, this is just, this is purely features and a basic simple design that will get the job done. It's got a USB 3.0 up on the front. And, um, you know, nothing blingy at all about this case, but it's solidly built and it has the features you need to put this, the parts in there and get everything up and running. Finally, for power supply, I keep going with EVGA power supplies. Trust me, guys, I keep looking and trying to find other good alternatives, but EVGA just seems to have a pretty decent stranglehold on, like, the good 80-plus bronze or better rated power supplies. Uh, this is not their Supernova series. As long as you don't get a Supernova, Supernova NEX, and that was pointed out to me in the May build series, the Supernova NEX not good rated, not well rated, but uh, the other ones in that series from EVGA, all the other ones are pretty good. This one does not have very nice cabling like some of the other models, um, but it is a more budget variety uh, for 500 watts, 80 plus bronze power supply. Uh, hey, can't go wrong with that one. And, you know, other options are out there, but well, I'll leave that to you guys if you want to spend a little bit more to get better cabling or that kind of thing. That's all for the first build. Let's move on to the second build, which is more expensive, of course. Uh, this is the $1,200. It's based around a GTX 1070. And I was going to go with a quad core like 6400 or 6500 uh, for the processor. And then I was like, you know, I, th I think it's 6600K will be good for this. So you could get a GTX 1070 based build for less money than this, for sure. You could probably shave one to $200 off of this by, for example, going with a 40 to $50 cheaper processor that's not unlocked, um, that maybe doesn't require an aftermarket CPU cooler. Um, you could also get a little bit cheaper price on the graphics card, for example, and I'll show you one example of that if you don't wanna go with the Founders Edition. And, you know, there's a couple other places you could shave off money, but hey, this is a $1,200 uh, build, and I think it's really solid all around. It's also very well matched. It's black and red. And if you want to match up the colors on your system, then build a black and red system because that is definitely like the, the easiest way to do that. Running down the parts one more time though, uh, i5-6600K, you can get these for about 240 bucks now. If you find a micro center, walk in and buy it for cheaper. Again, 40 to $50 less, you can get the uh, not unlocked versions of these, but um, you can get a lot of extra power a lot of extra performance by overclocking a 6600K. So go for this if you're planning to overclock it. And of course, if you do overclock, well, if you do get the unlocked processors, they don't come with a heatsink fan, so you will need to buy one. Uh, the CryoRig H7 is a great choice for that. It's about $35. Uh, you can buy it here from Amazon. Oh, it does have free shipping. Okay, 35 bucks plus free, free shipping. Uh, it's also available on Newegg, uh, but a very solid cooler. It looks pretty nice too and uh, I'm going to be building this system, and I have one of those, so hey, that's useful. Uh, MSI's gaming Z178 Gaming M3 motherboard is the one that I chose here. Uh, again, black and red, Z170 chipset, uh, good, good features all around, you know, it's got your SATA Express on there, and your, and your Newegg, you know, image. And Newegg needs to, like, Newegg image servers used to be awesome. They would pop up in, like, seconds. Now it takes way too long. Like, watch, watch how long this takes. Okay, that wasn't terribly long, but anyway. Uh, good power delivery on this. It's a, it's a decent overclocker. LGA 1151 socket, of course. Uh, four, four dim slots for memory. SATA Express. Uh, it even does have an M.2 port kind of right in there in the middle, uh, just underneath CPU slot. So uh, very, very nice solid motherboard all around. Uh, for memory, I went with black and red, of course. G-Scale Riptos 5 series. Um, there's lots of black and red memory kits out there. This one was just uh, a good deal, 70 bucks, and it's fast. DDR4 3000. Um, so hey. If you can find equivalent memory or faster memory for roughly the same price, I always go for the faster memory when that's an option, although I don't pay exorbitant amounts of cash for it. Um, you don't need the faster memory, but hey, might as well. Uh, next up for SSD, I went with the 480 gig drive. I find the 480 gig drives are just imminently affordable now, a little over $100 for this one, 109 total. Uh, it's a SanDisk SSD Plus. It's not quite as good as their Ultra, but very solid read and write speeds overall. And again, black and red, hey, matches with the color scheme. 
Look how thoughtful I was with that. All right, moving on to the graphics card. And this is the one that I actually have right here and I have uh, reviewed, or at least I did an SLI test with this. So this is MSI's GTX 1070 um, Gaming X, I believe. And they also have a just a gaming version of it. Now here's an interesting thing about these cards, at least their listings on Newegg. Uh, first off, it's pretty expensive. I mean, 380 is what the founders edition or what the reference cards are supposed to be, or then whatever they're calling the non-reference cards. This one's 460. Um, it is overclocked um, right out of the box, but you could get for $440 the gaming version that's not Gaming X, which looks exactly the same. It doesn't have the RGB lighting on it but the RGB lighting wasn't all that impressive for me anyway. And you can just get this one and overclock it and your performance would be the same and you could save 20 bucks. So maybe go ahead and do that. And, and that would be a little bit better option for you than uh, paying the full price for the Gaming X version. Although that is what I've listed here. So you can shave 20 bucks off its price just by doing that. Uh, but that's your graphics card. Let's just finish out with the case. NZXT S340, this is the black and red version. So again, a little bit of red accents on there will help everything match super nice. Uh, it's got a big side panel window, so your red and black build will look pretty in there with your special cabling and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, for 75 bucks, very solid case all around, very well reviewed. Finally, for power supply, EVGA again, the 650 GQ this time. This one's 80 plus gold rated, so it's definitely uh, more efficient, so you'll save a little bit more on your power bill. 9.4 out of 10 from Johnny Guru, who does really good power supply reviews, uh, and again, 75 bucks for 650 watt 80 plus gold. So I think that's a great choice. And the cable line on this also, um, it's not fully modular, it's partially modular, but even that uh, even that cable that's, that's permanently attached has nice black cabling on it, so it's gonna look good in your build. Um, anyway, that's all for this video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. Again, I will be building that uh, GTX 1070 system very soon, so stay tuned. Hit the uh, subscribe button if you're not already, and you can check out that when I come to it. If you want to see more builds right now, check out my builds uh, playlist. That's also linked down in the video description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out, and we'll see you next time.